prepared speech is uh, Janine Mazalupi. She's doing speech number four from the Entertaining Speakers Manual. Uh, it's a dramatic speech. The title is Mad. But before I just completely introduce her here, I just want to have a little prelude. Uh, I find that um, Janine is a very good speaker. She's been with us for some time. She's a, an accomplished camper and hiker. She takes her children out camping. We've had some interesting speeches about her children. There was one that strikes to my mind. Uh, a son of hers, a young lad, he was going to run away from home. He took exception to a meal that he was expected to eat. And in his uh, esoteric um, trying to find his place in the universe, he was going to run away from home. And uh, Janine, our speaker, was very wise as a mother. Nobody comes into this world with a manual how to raise children or how to parent. But I thought her wisdom of convincing him to stay until he was at least 18 to save up enough money and then he could leave home. So I'm going to bring up um, Janine. Her objectives are to tell a dramatic and personal story. Janine was with me. Okay, my story tonight is not esoteric. It's a personal story that happened to my sister. And it makes me just mad. This is one of those stories that makes your blood boil. And I'm going to write that down. The double D, because you all know what that stands for. Mothers Against Drunk Driving. But now I want to go further and add an extra D, because that's how angry I feel about the story. And let's, let's call it Mothers Against Dangerous Delinquent Drivers. Now, my sister at the time was six months pregnant, and she had her three-year-old son with her. And picture this uh, scene. It's a wintry day in Richmond. It's raining and it's dark. And she is in a little white Ford Fiesta. Now, I don't know if any of you know what a Ford Fiesta looks like, but it's probably no bigger than a, or maybe just slightly bigger than a smart car. So when you're sitting in the front seat of a Ford Fiesta, you really feel like you're practically sitting on the ground you don't have a lot of visibility like you do when you're in a bigger car. And so you do tend to drive a bit more conservatively and cautiously. You don't have that same um, amount of power in order to get quickly across intersections. So she stopped at um, this intersection. It was rush hour traffic in Richmond. I don't know what street it was, but this was just crazy, this road here. And she was at this intersection, at T-junction, trying to merge into the traffic. And so she's waiting and waiting and waiting. And it must have been a couple of minutes later when a white Ford Fizo pulled up behind her. Now, I call it a white Ford Fizo because that's just what I've always called it. Somebody told me that it's an F-150. <laughs> I guess my eyes are not as good as they used to be. So I'm just going to continue with the, the Ford Pfizer because I think it sounds a lot more interesting. And um, she notices that there are three numbskulls sitting in the back in the car. And the reason she called them numbskulls is because she's deaf, but she could feel the vibration of the thumping of their loud music just shaking the inside of her car. So she's sitting at this intersection, you know, frustrated as it is, and now she's got this thumping, you know, just to make things worse. And she's trying to concentrate and it's just really difficult with this car behind her. She can feel their impatient glares, you know, boring into the back of her head as she's sitting there. And then their lights start flashing. And then they start honking their horn. And you will 
not believe what happens next. She feels the car nudge forward. And she, she like checks the brake and it's working, but she feels it again and she looks up at, into her rear view mirror and she sees this car practically on her bumper. They had latched onto her, her rear bumper and they were slowly nudging her forward into this busy intersection. And she said she just felt the blood drain from her. And if she'd been on her own, she would have immediately got out the car to safety. But she couldn't do that because she had her three-year-old son strapped into his car seat in the back and she didn't want to leave him in that situation. So with her heart thumping in her ears, she tried to focus. And right at the very last second when she thought it was almost going to end in disaster, she saw a break and she just raced across the intersection. so relieved to actually get across and she continued on her journey and as shaken up as she was she thought you know that that was that was it but a little while later she saw this car come up behind her again and again it was driving right on her um, bumper practically and at the minute they could overtake her they shot in front of her and then slammed on the brakes to virtually a complete stop in front of her. There was space on the side of the road. She pulled over just to stop completely and to get out of their way because she didn't know what, what to expect. They pulled over and she thought they were going to get out the car and you know come and do something to her. She did something very clever then. She reached into her bag and grabbed a pencil and a notepad and she started writing down their license plate number. It was actually the first time that she was able to see it because when they were behind her she couldn't see it, they were just too close. And the minute they saw her do that, they slammed on the brakes and they sped, they sped out of there so fast. She did report it to the police station, but to this day we have no idea, you know, what came of it. We don't know if uh, their parents were notified. Perhaps nothing happened because nothing happened. So, this is just a story that makes my blood boil every time I hear it, and I propose that all new drivers no matter what your age, for the first two years during that learning period, all new drivers should not be allowed to drive anything bigger than a smart car. Just to appreciate that vulnerability of driving a smaller car and learning how to be patient. And I propose that MAD have three Ds, Mothers Against Dangerous Delinquent Drivers. Thank you.